Hello, St. Mark's friends. Welcome back. Sometimes we get to have a do-over. This is what this is because this past Sunday the sermon was cut about in the middle of it and missed some good stuff. So if you want to hear the entire story of the sermon, stay tuned. The sermon features a door because in the gospel text, Jesus says, I am the door. At least that's one translation. Another translation says, I am the gate. Hence these gate uh, mechanisms up here, up here at our chancel area. This is chapter 10 of John and the following chapter, chapter 11, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Just some of those I am statements by Jesus. This past Sunday, I tried to connect both the door or the gate and the good shepherd with the reading from Acts chapter 2 where people shared their food and broke bread together in fellowship and, and more people were added to their number because of the love of Christ that they experienced in their hearts and they shared with one another. So here is the story that I shared on Sunday and it goes something like this. Once upon a time, a long time ago in the land of Ephatha, there was a very happy and friendly people. They lived in huts and in caves, and they always came and went in and out of their huts and caves as they pleased. And people came into each other's huts and caves, and they visited with other people in the other people's huts and caves. There was also a wonderful forest all around them outside, and they could share in the good creation all around them because of that. Now, there were some problems, of course. In the wintertime, the cold wind blew into the cave and made the people very cold. Or when rains came down, sometimes the rains went into the hut and got the people wet. And then, of course, there were small bugs and critters that they didn't much care for that came in and out of their caves and huts as well. So, one day, a traveling salesman came to town. The traveling salesman had heard about this happy, friendly people, but also about their problem. And the traveling salesman, wearing a red cap, came to help them with their problem. The traveling salesman was selling doors. Door? What is a door, the people said. Well, a door is, well, let me show you, the traveling salesman said, and went out into the forest outside of Ephatha and cut down a nice oak tree and came back with a sturdy oak wood piece that he cut into a door. He made it into a door and he showed the people how to do it. And then he had a doorknob on it and a lock on it. And he took it to one of the huts and showed them how to hinge it so that it opened and it shut. Of course, everyone in Ephatha wanted one of these new fancy doors. And they went out into the forest and they cut down trees, oak trees and maple trees and pine trees. And then they cut down fruit trees, orange and peach and all the nut trees too. Pretty soon they had dug up all the vines as well. And they had gone back to their huts and to their caves, and they had been making doors. And they put the doors right there on the front of their hut and of their cave. Pretty soon, that traveling salesman took their money and left. And the people were very happy because they had a door. But pretty soon, they got hungry because it had been a full day's worth of work. <laughs> so they went back out to the forest to gather their fruit and their berries and their nuts and to see the animals only to discover there was no forest left. They picked up what they could from the floor of the forest, a few nuts, a few berries, and they ran back inside their hut and inside their cave and they slammed the door behind them locked it shut so no one could come and take their fruit or their nuts. They stayed inside the door of their hut and of their cave for a long time with their family. And at first they shared, but then they started getting on each other's nerves. And with excess wood, they built smaller doors, doors inside the huts and inside the caves that would separate husband from wife and parent from child and brother from sister. There were doors all over, and then they made even smaller doors. They covered their eyes with some of the doors and the ears with others so they would not have to see or hear one another. Pretty soon, before they knew it, they had a door even over their heart. 
Well, this went on for some time. And the king, who had all of the kingdom, including the village of Ephatha, heard about the concerns of this wonderful, happy, friendly people of Ephatha, who now were nowhere to be seen because they were locked behind closed doors, and they were no longer happy or friendly. So the king himself went to the people, went and knocked on the doors, but of course they never heard him or saw him. The king said, let me in, open up, and then went away. Soon the king sent the king's servants, and the king's servants came and did the same. They knocked on the doors. They said, open up, but the people of Ephatha would not see or hear or open their doors. So the king sent the king's son. The king's son came to the town of Ephatha, knocked on the doors. And all of a sudden, some of the people noticed that there was a bit of rattling and they could sense something was going on. Some of them peered out from behind the doors of their windows and they saw or they heard from behind the doors of their ears that it was the king's son. But they would not let the king's son in either. So the king's son went back out into the forest and came back carrying a door. Came back carrying a door on his back like it was the weight of the world he was struggling with. This past Sunday, Jim Chelgren from St. Mark's, whose initials happened to be J.C., carried that door. The king's son carried the door into the crossroads of the village of Ephatha right there at the crossroads, and placed the door, standing up for just a moment. And then, as it balanced, went back out to the forest, came back pushing four large boulders that he put in the four spots, and then laid the door down. Some of the people were now watching and seeing what was going on, looking out from behind the doors of their eyes and the doors of their ears and even the doors of their hut or of their cave. And they saw him place that door horizontal, laying that door down. What in the world is he doing with that door? We've never seen anything like that. And then the king's son went back out to the forest and came back pulling a wagon filled with fruit and nuts and all of the creatures of the forest. It was a very heavy wagon filled. And then the people realized that they had been in their cave and in their hut behind that closed door for so long that the forest had grown back. Well, the king's son pulled the wagon right up to that horizontal door and left again. This time, coming back, pulling another wagon filled with boulders and rocks that the king's son placed at the crossroads out from his door. This way and that way, so it formed an X or a T. It looked like this. And then the king's son pulled some grapes and something that almost looked like bread right there and put it on that horizontal door and sat down. The king's son was very tired and started to take a bite and then looked around at all of the people in the village, all the people in the huts and the caves, looked at all those closed doors, but some of them were starting to crack open now out of curiosity. And he went like this with his arms and he welcomed them to the table as they now called it. He welcomed them to come and feast with him, but to also bring their doors. So the people quickly unbolted and unlocked the doors. They took the doors off the hinges. They brought the doors out. And at his direction, the people placed the doors on the boulders and on the rocks, making it into a cross right there in the crossroads of the village. After a while, the king's son went away but invited the people to gather always right there and feast. To gather and feast and to remember. To gather and feast and to remember and to forgive. To gather and feast and to remember and to forgive. To forgive one another for locking themselves behind doors. 
to remember what it was like to be happy, friendly people, to remember the gift of the king's son, this door that is now not so much a door but a table, a table filled with bounteous goodness, a feast set before them. And every first day of the week, if at all possible, to come out from their huts and their caves, bringing their doors and bringing their food and having shared fellowship together. Sharing, forgiving, feasting. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O oh God, our King and King's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.